hello friends good morning welcome back to our channel alp talks this is your lakshmi bhati uh, many of you may be uh, knowing me uh, through all my previous videos if you are watching the, this video for the first time uh, to introduce myself uh, my, uh, myself lakshmi bhati an electrical design engineer working in an mnc company i just uh, i'm fascinated about uh, all electrical stuff uh, so i just want to share all my knowledge uh, through these uh, videos so that uh, anybody any people who are in need they can be benefited yeah it's about myself yeah coming to today's topic it's uh, about magnetic circuit and uh, some core losses magnetic circuit is a uh, most important in today's uh, uh, most of electrical devices it may be motor it may be transformer it may be generator uh, some reactor in most of the places we are using magnetic circuit for converting energy from one form to another form uh, magnetic plays a major role so just uh, to have some good understanding on this concept i'm just uh, discussing this thing so this is magnetic circuits here is the contents magnetic circuit goals of the lesson introduction different laws for calculating magnetic field biot severs law ampere circuit law application of ampere circuit law in magnetic circuit reluctance and permeance bh characteristics different zones of bh characteristics analysis of series magnetic circuit analysis of series and magnet parallel magnetic circuit some important equations general discussion on solving problems worked out example answer the following take the correct choice these are the contents we are going to discuss today yeah so the goals of this lesson in this lesson we shall acquaint the reader primarily with the basic concepts of magnetic circuit and methods of solving it bio severs law for calculating magnetic field due to a known current distribution although fundamental and general in nature requires an integration to be evaluated which sometimes become an hopeful task it's very difficult fortunately due to the specific nature of the problem ampere circuit law much easier to apply is adopted for calculating field in the core core of a magnetic circuit you will also understand the importance of bh curve of magnetic material and its use the concept and analysis of linear and non linear magnetic circuit will be explained the lesson will conclude with some worked out examples keywords mmf flux flux density mean length permeability reluctance after going through this section students or the viewers will be able to answer the following questions what is magnetic circuit what are linear and non linear magnetic circuits what information about the core is necessary for solving linear magnetic circuit what information about the core is necessary for solving non linear magnetic circuit how to identify better magnetic material from the bh curve characteristics of several materials what should be done in order to reverse the directions of field within the core what assumption is made to assume that flux density remains constant throughout the section of the core what is the expression for energy stored in the air gap of magnetic circuit uh, enumerate applications of magnetic circuit in the core of magnetic material to be laminated when the existing uh, exciting current is dc they will also be able to do the following how to translate a given magnetic circuit into its uh, electrical equivalent circuit how to draw bh curve for a given material from the data supplied and how to use it for solving problem how to solve various kinds of problems involving magnetic circuits yeah this is a introduction 
Before really starting, let us look at some magnetic circuits shown in following figures. All of them have a magnetic material of a regular geometry shape called core. A coil having number of turns n of conducting material say copper or aluminum are wound over the core. This coil is called exciting coil. Here you can see this portion we will call exciting coil. This portion whatever the portion is there we will call it as a exciting coil. When no current flows through the coil, we don't expect any magnetic field or lines of force to present inside the core. However, in presence of current in the coil, magnetic flux phi will be produced within the core. The strength of flux it will be shown depends upon product, product of number of turns of the coil and current it carries. The quantity Ni called MMF magnetomotive force can be thought as the cause in order to produce an effect in the form of flux within the core. It is not somewhat similar to electrical circuit problem where a voltage is applied cause and uh, current is produced effect in the circuits. Hence the term magnetic circuit is used in relation to produce flux in the core by applying MMF. We shall see more similarities between an electrical circuit and magnetic circuit in due course as we go along further. At this point, you may, you may just note that a magnetic circuit may be simple as shown in figure 21.1 with a single core and single coil as complex as having different core materials, air gap, multiple exciting coils, etc. After going through this lesson, you will be able to do the following to distinguish between a linear and nonlinear magnetic circuit, to draw equivalent electrical circuit for a given magnetic circuit problem, to calculate mean length of various flux paths, to calculate reluctance of various flux paths for linear magnetic circuit problem, to understand the importance of BH characteristic of different materials. How to deal with nonlinear magnetic circuit problem using BH characteristics of materials? Different laws for calculating magnetic field. There are different laws. Biot Severs law and one, one more is the uh, Ampio circuital law. So here uh, we can uh, see Biot Severs law. We know that any current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field. A magnetic field R is uh, characterized either by H bar, the magnetic field intensity or by B bar, the magnetic field de flux density vector. Here I am uh, discussing about bar, it is a vector quantity H or B. Whenever we have uh, an arrow at the top, I am reading it like a bar, H bar, B bar, A bar, B bar like that. These two vectors are connected by a rather simple relation B equal to M mu naught mu or h. Generally, we will say b, b equal to mu h. This is the basic rule. Here mu is mu naught mu or, where mu naught equal to 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 Henry per meter. It is called absolute permeability of free space. Mu or is a dimensionless quantity called relative permeability of medium or a material. For example, the value of mu r is uh, 1 for free space and could be several thousands in case of ferromagnetic materials. Generally for CRGO core something like that it will be around 20,000. Bayard Severs law is fundamental in nature and tells us how to calculate dB or dH bar at a given point with a position vector r due to an element current ideal. So, for example, let us consider a, a current carrying conductor, a small element in that uh, ideal. So let us consider a distance r. What is the, that is say rad radius r. So here I consider a small element, small element. So 
what is the field at this uh, element due to this current carrying conductor so that's what by its ever slug gives db bar equal to mu naught mu or ideal sin theta by r square generally so this is a vector product if you if you have to write in vector form it it will be like this mu naught mu or ideal cross r bar by 4 pi r cube if the shape and dimensions of the conductor carrying conductor current is known then field at a given point can be calculated by integrating the rhs of above equation b equal to mu naught mu or by integration over entire length ideal cross r bar by r cube where length indicates the integration is to be carried out over the length of the conductor however it is often not easy to evaluate the integral for calculating field at any point due to any arbitrary shaped conductor one gets a nice closed form solution for few cases such as straight conductor carries current and to calculate field at a distance d from the conductor circular coil carries current and to calculate field at a point situated on the axis of the coil yeah for remaining all cases it's very complex and difficult to use uh, these for equations for calculating magnetic field so we have another another formula uh, which was stated by ampere's law ampere circuit's law so let's discuss this law states that line integral of the vector h bar along any arbitrary closed path is equal to current enclosed by the path here we can see mathematical formation closed integral h dot dl equal to i for certain problems particularly in magnetic circuit problems ampere circuit law is used to calculate field instead of more fundamental bayer severs law for reasons going to be explained below consider an infinite straight conductor carrying current i and we want to calculate field at a point instead situated at a distance d from the conductor now take the closed path to be circle of radius d at any point on the circle magnetic field strength will be constant and direction of the field will be tangential thus left hand side of the above equation simply becomes h into 2 pi d so the field strength h equal to i by 2 pi d ampere per meter it should be noted that in arriving at the final result no integration is required it's very simple it is obtained rather quickly however when i have to choose a suitable path looking at the distribution of the current and arguing that the magnetic magnitude of the field remains constant throughout the path before applying this law with advantage it should, the path the magnetic field should not vary throughout on the periphery of the path whatever we choose in applications of ampere circuit law in uh, magnetic circuit ampere circuit law is quite handy in determining field strength within the core of a magnetic material due to application of mmf the tiny dipole magnets of the core are aligned one after the other other the other in somewhat disciplined manner the contour of the lines of force resemble the shape of the material the situation is somewhat similar to flow of water through an arbitrary shaped pipe flow path is constrained to be the shape of the bent pipe for example look at the sectional view of toroidal magnetic circuit with n number of tones wound uniformly as shown below here is the picture we can see this is the toroidal structure here we have winded the tones over toroidal surface here cross represents into the plane dot represents out of the plane when the coil carries a current i magnetic lines of force will be created and they will be confined confined with the core as the permeability of core is many times more than a so simply apply our right hand form rule whenever our whenever current is a flowing in the finger direction then we will have flux line in our thumb direction that's it here also simple thing so uh, you apply right hand thumb rule here so you will get a flux line path and all take the chosen path to be a circle of radius r note that the value of h will remain same at any point on this path 
and direction will be always tangential to the path. So the direction of flux will be like this. I mean, yeah, it is like this tangential. Uh, I mean to say tangential. It will be like tangential. Yeah. So it will simply form the shape of the material. So by applying Ampere circuital law to the path, uh, we will get the value of h equal to n i by 2 pi r. If r is increased from a to b, a is inner radius and b is outer radius, the value of h decreases with r. Yes. So this is the toroidal core shape. The assumptions we made here is a uh, leakage flux and fringing effect. Strictly speaking, all the flux produced by the MMF will not be confined to the core. There will be some more flux lines which will completely complete their path largely through the height as uh, depicted in uh, this figure. Here you can see, the, yeah, here you can see this is the fringing flux path here just uh, an uh, enlarged view you can see here flux is flowing from top to bottom like this this is north pole this is south pole yeah since the reluctance discussed in the following section or air is much high compared to the reluctance offered by the core the leakage flux produced is a uh, small in our discussion here we shall neglect leakage flux and assume all the flux produced will be confined to the core only. In the magnetic circuit of figure above figure, an air gap is present. For, ex for an exciting current, the flux lines produced are shown. These flux lines cross the air gap from top surface of the core to the bottom surface of the core. So the upper surface behaves like north pole and the bottom surface behaves like south pole. Thus, all the flux lines will not be vertical and confined to the core flux alone. Sometimes some lines of force in fact will reach the bottom surface via bulged curve path outside the face area of the core. Yeah, this, these lines I am I'm saying here, they, they are bulged one. These flux which follow the curved path are called fringing flux and the phenomenon is called fringing effect. Obviously, the effect of fringing will be smaller if the air gap is quite small. Effect of fringing will be appreciable if the air gap length is more. In short, the effect of fringing is to make flux density in the air gap a bit less than in the core as in the air, same amount of flux is spread over an area which is greater than the core sectional area. Unless otherwise specified, we shall neglect the fringing effect in our following discussion effect of fringing sometimes take into account by considering the effective area in A to be about 10 to, 10 to 12 percent higher than core area. In the practical magnetic, magnetic circuit, the thickness over which the lines of force are spread B minus A are much smaller compared to overall dimensions A or B of the core. Under this condition, we shall not make great mistake if we calculate h, h equal to h as rm equal to b minus a by 2 and take this h to be everywhere within the core. The length of flux path corresponding to the mean radius that is 2 pi r is called mean length. This assumption allows us to calculate total flux phi produced within the core rather easily enumerated below. Calculate the mean length LM of a flux path from given geometry of magnetic circuit. Apply Ampere's uh, circuital law to calculate H equal to Ni by LM. Note this H may be assumed to be same everywhere in the core. Calculate magnetic magnitude of flux density from the relation B equal to mu H. Total flux within the core is uh, phi equal to BA where A is cross-sectional area of the core. We have uh, two most usually terms, reluctance and permeance. Let's understand that. So, flux produced phi and MMF Ni applied for a linear case. Phi equal to BA, that is basic principle. B, B equal to mu H, mu naught mu R H, A, that is a linear relationship between B and H. Mu naught mu R, we are replacing H with uh, Ni by L. So, 
by rearranging the terms n i by l by mu a. Now defining n i equal to m m f and reluctance equal to l by mu a, the above equation we can write it like a uh, n i by one just uh, rearrange the terms flux equal to m m f by reluctance. This equation resembles the familiar current voltage relationship of an electric circuit which is produced below for immediate comparison i equal to v by r that is what uh, we, have, we, we can take from Ohm's law right. So, here r means uh, rho l by a voltage and resistance. Similarly, we can compare uh, in magnetic circuit also here r equal to l by mu a this is uh, resistance of magnetic circuit. Here this is the resistance of electric circuit, here in, instead of resistance we can say reluctance of magnetic circuit, yes, uh, opposite 1 by reluctance is nothing but uh, permeance. Now let us discuss about BH characteristics, a magnetic material is defined, identified and characterized by BH characteristics only, in free space or in air the relationship between the two is linear, it is uh, like uh, linear and constant of proportionality mu, mu is the uh, permeability mu naught. If B is plotted against H, it will be straight line. However, for most of the material, the relationship is not linear, is, uh, uh, it, it is shown in uh, figure 21.7, here you can see it is not linear. For some reason it may be linear like this, but it will be non-linear for most of the region and then the slope of the it will, the slope of the curve will almost uh, approach 0 where it is and enter into the saturation region. A brief outline for experimental determination of BH characteristic of a given material is given below. First of all, a sample magnetic circuit with the given material is fabricated with known dimensions and number of turns. Make a circuit arrangement such as shown in below figure to increase current from 0 to some safe maximum value. Apart from ammeter reading, one should record the amount of flux produced in core by using flux meter. So, let us know, let us don't, don't worry about how flux meter works now because practically we may not have flux meters, but just uh, understanding purpose uh, we are uh, discussing here. N is number of turns, L is the mean length of flux path in uh, meter, cross sectional area A meter square, reading of a meter I in M, reading of flux meter phi in Weber. Now corresponding to, corresponding to this current calculate H equal to H Ni by L and B phi by A and tabulate them. Thus, we have several pair of H and B values for different values of currents. Now, by choosing H to be on X axis, B to be on Y axis, plotting the above values, one gets a typical BH curve as shown in figure like this. This is the supply setup. Just simply take turns and supply some current and measure the flux. This is some toroidal cross section. Different zones of BH characteristic. Yeah, just let us discuss it. The initial portion of BH curve is nearly straight line and called a linear zone. After this zone, the curve gradually starts deviating from straight line and enters into non-linear zone. The slope of the curve dB by dH starts gradually decreasing after linear zone. A time comes when there is practically no increase in B in spite of fact that H is further increased, the material is said to be saturated. The rise in value of B in linear zone is much more than in the non-linear or saturation zone for same delta H. This can be ascertained from figure B, uh, BH curve by noting dB1 greater than dB2 for same dH. For this reason, for, for, for this lesson, a brief qualitative explanation for the typical nature of BH curve is given. In a ferromagnetic material, very large number of tiny magnetic magnets, magnetic dipoles are present at atomic or molecular level. 
this material however does not show any net magnetic property at macroscopic level due to random distribution of dipoles and the eventual cancellation of their effects. In presence of an external field, these dipoles start aligning themselves along the direction of applied field. Thus, the more and more dipoles align resulting into more B as H, that is, uh, current in the exciting coil is increased. At the initial phase, increase in B is practically proportional to H, however, rate of alignment gets reduced after definite value of H as number of randomly distributed dipoles decrease. This is reflected in the nonlinear zone of the figure. Obviously, if we further increase H, a time will come when almost all the dipoles will align. Under such circumstances, we should not expect any rise in B even if H is increased and core is said to be saturated. At the saturation zone, the characteristic becomes almost parallel to the H axis. Yes, so let's adjust to illustrate this. So I'm just drawing here, say these are the some different dipoles available in one, one of the magnetic specimen. They will be like this. So they will be cancelling each other, the net magnetic field equal to zero. So the same specimen when an electric field H is applied outside, say for small amount, then what happens? Whatever the tiny fields are there, they will try to align it. Almost, they will try to align themselves. Few, few may be still wrong in away the other direction. So, the higher the magnetic field applied, say this is bigger one, so everything will be aligned finally. That's what linear zone says. In linear zone, whenever you are applying magnetic field, say this is B. It keep on align, 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 align. So if you are keep on increasing H, everything will be aligned. That's it. There will be no further alignment. That's what saturation. Different material will have different BH curves. And if characteristics are plotted on same graph, one can readily decide which of them is better than the other. Referring to figure 21.9, one can easily conclude that material 3 is better over the other two and the flux produced in material 3 is the highest for same applied field. Here you can see this is B1, B2, B3 for same applied field H, B3 offers more magnetic field. So material 3 is a better one when compared to others. From the, disc from the above discussion, it can be said that there is no point in operating a magnetic circuit deep into saturation zone as because large exciting current will put extra overhead on the source supplying power to the coil. Also any desire to increase B by even a small amount in this zone will call for large increase in the value of the current. In case of transformers and rotating machines, rotating machines, uh, operating point is chosen close to the knee point of the BH characteristic in order to use the magnetic material to its uh, full potential. To design a constant value of inductance, the operating point should be chosen in the linear zone. Approach to solve a magnetic problem will be different for linear and non-linear cases. In the following section, let us discuss those approaches followed by equivalent circuit representation of magnetic circuits. It is uh, instructive to draw always the equivalent representation of magnetic circuit for the following reasons. It will help us to visualize the problem in terms of more familiar series and uh, series parallel DC circuits. We can apply with the uh, easy Kirchhoff's law, Kirchhoff's flux law, KFL at junctions in the same manner as we apply Kirchhoff current law, KCL in circuit analysis. Similar to KBL, Kirchhoff voltage equations, we can apply MMF balance equations in uh, different in different closed paths of the magnetic circuit. Above all, with this circuit beforehand, one can decide upon the strategy of solving the problem. Analysis of series magnetic circuit. Consider first a simple magnetic circuit shown in figure 21.1. 
with a single core magnetic material having uniform cross sectional area a a mean length of flux path l reluctance offered to the flux path is a uh, r the corresponding electrical representation is uh, rather simple due to the fact that ni equal to phi r equal to hl the equivalent electrical circuit is also drawn beside the magnetic circuit polarity of mmf is decided on the basis of direction of flux which is a clockwise inside the core in this case although in actual magnetic circuit there is no physical connection of winding and core in electrical circuit representation in mmf and reluctance are shown to be connected shown to be connected one should not feel disturbed by this because the relationship between mmf and flux prompted us to draw an electrical equivalent to facilitate easy calculation and neat visualization of the actual problem here is ni this is mmf this is the flux flowing in the circuit this is a reluctance offered to the flux flux this is the magnetic field strength this is the mean length of the flux length so this is a physical circuit where where uh, some end turns are wound on the circuit i current is flowing uh, through the entire through the circuit which is producing a flux phi which is traveling entire length l a is the area of cross section of the length flux let us now consider another magnetic circuit which is similar to the earlier one but has small air gap of length lg here is the circuit just for identification we just named it uh, s r q t p u something like that so this is the air gap length so here we introduced some air gap so how the circuit is now so this is the iron circuit iron magnetic path so the iron reluctance iron means core so here the gap length gap intensity gap length and gap reluctance yes the remaining all figures are same if cross section of area is constant throughout 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 the flux density b equal to phi by a will also constant both in iron and air path since the value permeabilities are different of iron and air the corresponding values of h will be different so h required for iron h i equal to b by mu not mu i h required for air h equal to b by mu not ampere circuit law gives n i equal to h i l i plus h g l g so that's what we see in right integral closed integral of h dot d l equal to n i so you are simply replacing h i by b by mu i mu not mu i and h g by b by mu b by mu not so again we are replacing b by flux by area flux by area now oh, we are uh, we are just uh, rearranging the terms n i equal to flux into that l by mu i is nothing but reluctance here iron core reluctance and uh, gap reluctance so we are just uh, taking common uh, flux so r i plus r g so flux is nothing but n i by reluctance flux is nothing but n i by reluctance so as expected these two reluctances are connected in series in fact for series magnetic circuit having different reluctance segments total reluctance will be the sum of individual reluctance this is similar to the resistance concept when two resistances are connected in series net reactance and net resistance will be sum of two resistances analysis of series parallel magnetic circuit we now take up following magnetic circuit which appears to be not so straightforward as previous case at a first step to solve this circuit we would like to draw equivalent electrical representation vertical links of the core are called limbs and horizontal limb links are called yoke of the magnetic circuit in the figure pu qt rs are the limbs this one vertical one pu qt rs this vertical one are your limbs pq qr ut ts whatever uh, this uh, horizontal limbs are there 
they are called uh, yokes. It is customary to fix the corner points P, Q, R, etc. from the given physical dimensions, joining of which will give mean length of flux path. So here is the electrical circuit for that. If the coil carries a current I in the direction shown, in the direction shown, I think here uh, it should be like this. It should be like this because to just circulate flux in the clockwise direction, uh, the direction should be like this. So it's okay now. It's uh, following. Yeah, if the coil carries a current I in the direction shown, flux phi produced in the first limb will be upward direction. Here you can see that whatever the flux is produced, this is going in upward direction and it is traveling this way, traveling this way. Here there is a chance for splitting. So this flux is getting splitted into one is a phi 1, similar way other one as a phi 2. So entire this uh, phi 2 will carry this path like this, this path like this, this path and again it will come here. This again junction point, this is phi 1 it will same travel. So, they both meet at this point at T joint point and then again phi flux will go to the source again. So, whatever the path is there, now we are going to calculate it. So, this path we already seen that whatever I run and G gap both are in series and this entire big path another path. So, these two paths are parallel. That here the center limb flux is uh, same, however, it encounters two materials one iron, other one is small air gap. So, reluctance of air gap Rg is Lg by mu Ga, similarly, La, Li by mu i mu R A. So, here we can uh, add for, uh, for first case, we can add uh, both, they are in series. Yes, so finally, we can draw circuit like this. The net flux will be phi 1 and phi 2. Yeah. So, general discussion on solving problems. As pointed out earlier, the approach to solve magnetic circuit problem is primarily guided by the fact that whether the magnetic circuit is linear or not. If it is linear, then the material is fully characterized by relative permeability mu r and the reluctance which remains constant independent of operating point can be easily calculated and shown in the equivalent circuit. In other words, for linear cases, magnetic circuit problems are solved exactly in same manner solving linear electrical circuits. Depending upon situation, one can invoke any convenient method of solving electrical circuit problem here as well. Let us go through the following, sol following solved linear magnetic circuit numerical problem to understand the steps involved. Here is a worked out example. In magnetic circuit, detail 21.14 with all dimensions in mm, calculate the required current to be passed in the coil having 200 tones in order to establish flux of 1.28 milliweber in the air gap. Neglect fringing effect and leakage flux. The BH curve of the material is uh, given below. Permeability of air may be taken as mu naught equal to 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 Henry per meter. Solution. First, first draw the simplified diagram of the given magnetic circuit along with the equivalent circuit as shown in 21.16. Yeah. So, here is the magnetic uh, left side is the physical structure, uh, this right side one is the uh, equivalent one. So, this is the uh, H2I2. Some air gap is introduced at HGIG. So, we have another parallel path H1I1. So, H, H1L1 like that. So, this first path we named it as 3 H3L3. So, A, B, C, D, E, F. We have named it like that. In question, in, in question itself, it is mentioned like uh, 200 tons are there in primary. The dimensions also here clearly mentioned 170 mm, here 440. This is the BH curve, BH curve values. So, here is the curve, the curve, they have done some experiment and they have written the, so curve is like this. So, whatever the curve is coming, it is like this. So, 
for thousand value of h we will get b as one point maybe here one point six eight or something like that so some so similar way for five hundred value of uh, this is a uh, equivalent graph semi log graph one two three four five for five here we can see one point two for five hundred it can be one point two so first draw the simplified diagram of given magnetic circuit along with the equivalent circuit to calculate mean length of various parts mark the center points of various limbs and yoke with a small bullets yes so it's better to just uh, draw just uh, center lines something like that so this is a mean length for calculating mean length so just you mark something like that so it's better to calculate it so this uh, 40 mm depth is there 60 mm width is there 500 mm height is there here uh, 200 mm is uh, edge to uh, 200 mm is a uh, center to edge this, this side also center to edge so name the different portions as we already did it say this is a two, 3 2 1 so the flux in gap or uh, gap and phi 2 is 1.28 into 10 power minus 3 cross sectional area of central limb a2 is nothing but just uh, the 16 into 10 power minus 4 uh, that's the uh, why because uh, here we have 40 this is also 40 so 40 40 16 so here uh, we got a uh, 16 flux density bz b2 it's nothing but uh, flux to flux by a sorry we can calculate like this 0.8 tesla is coming so for the 0.8 uh, tesla bz by mu naught bz is the point 0.8 so mu naught is 4 pi so we calculated a hg so hg value came like a 63 uh, 63 into 10 power 4 ampere turns per meter is required in the a gap section so hg lg uh, by multiplying with the uh, uh, with mid length we will get uh, 80 ampere turns so we must calculate the mmf required in the iron portion of the central limb as follow Flux density B2, 0.8 Tesla. Here we neglected fringing and all. Corresponding H, H from the graph 500 ampere turn. So just go to the graph uh, for the 0.8, it will be around 500 here somewhere. So we got 500 ampere turns. So just uh, calculate mean length. By ca after calculating mean length, just add total MMF for iron and air. In central limb, it is a 283. Similarly, you calculate flux for uh, side limb, right side limb, it will be 363. So, finally, we got uh, flux uh, 51. It has a 0.94 into 10 power minus 3. If we add both fluxes, it will be 2.22. Flux density B3 in the main limb in the uh, Side, side limb left side is a uh, pi 3 by a 3 2.22 by 24 into 10 power minus 4 so we will get uh, here my 925 tesla for uh, from the graph for 925 the 562 will be the h3 so mean length of uh, l3 will be this entire length so whatever uh, say for, uh, here we have some air gap here uh, this is a uh, 3 just for uh, information purpose I am drawing here again so mean length of path 3 uh, 2 into 170 plus uh, 2, 220 into 2 440 so this entire length we calculated here for H3 mm. so we need uh, 438 uh, ampere turns from this conductor this 438 ampere turns so mmf to be supplied by the coil ni equal to 438 plus 283 because we have a two so exciting current needed is a 723 by 200 so it will be 3.61 amp so we need 3.61 amp from 
exciting coil that much current we need so as we know area and generally maximum flux density flux flux density and all so around 56 volts it may need to, it may need to generate uh, this much current a phase as it is single phase so uh, this is about uh, magnetic circuit guys uh, it is a very detailed explanation a very big big document so here is few questions just uh, uh, you answer these questions yourself if you are if you can answer in comments more you are most welcome is clearly state ampere's critical circuited law write down the expressions for reluctance what is it uh, units what is the main length and uh, its importance give two magnetic materials with permeability mu1 and mu2 with a mu1 greater than mu2 why not the operating point is selected in the saturation zone of bh characteristic two milliweber is to be produced in the air gap of magnetic circuit shown in figure how much ampere turns the coil must provide to achieve this relative permeability mu r of the core material may be assumed to be constant and equal to 5000 all dimensions shown in uh, centimeter and area is 25 uh, centimeter square throughout this is the figure here uh, there are some questions just tick the correct one in the magnetic circuit the second coil carries a current of uh, 2 ampere if flux in the core is to be made zero made zero the current i in the first coil should be how much just check it and comment it by mentioning question number a magnetic circuit has a continuous core of ferromagnetic material co coil is supplied from a battery and draws a certain amount of exciting current producing a certain amount of flux in the core if now air gap is introduced in the core the excited current will increase remain same or decrease at zero so just give your answer in comment section yes the final answers i will also post in comment section not now maybe after one month so that i can give some sufficient time to all of you to practice it but the magnetic circuit shown shown into the so shown below reluctance of central rim is uh, 10 into 10 power 5 ampere turn for weber and the reluctance of outer limb pts and pqs are same and equal to 15 into 10 power 5 to produce 0.5 weber in pqs the mmf to produced by the coil is so just answer your answer yeah this is one more question similar way this is the fifth one a magnetic circuit draws a certain amount of alternating sinusoidal exciting current producing certain amount of alternating flux in the core if the air gap is introduced in the core path the exciting current will will definitely increase whenever uh, air gap is there it will draw more current to excite it yeah so please answer for remaining four questions um, if you have any doubts or comments uh, please uh, comment in comment section i hope uh, it's a very big, big session but yes it needs to be understand clearly then only we can understand all the magnetic properties of the circuits so stay connected for uh, future videos and please watch all my previous videos thank you bye bye guys